So can you explain to us what happened with Dave Landau and Steven Crowder? So as, as, this is as far as Dave Landau said, he was on Michael Malice's show. He, um, he used to be the third chair on Crowder. And then he basically had this contract dispute and uh did he just leave the door to the bathroom open yeah yeah, yeah we yeah, can hear yeah. you ryan he, he's ryan, got a very you... small bladder he's a ask, ask just leave the bathroom door open ask chat gbt's uh about ryan <laughs> something close famously it. small <laughs> bladder anyway what happened when anyway so they so he was third chair and then essentially they had this like you know contract thing and it was very heavy-handed like he, he was saying he was trying to uh he wasn't allowed to promote his dates like his, comedy, his comedy dates, right? Yeah. And basically, so he he used to be Anthony Cumia's um, co-host, and then he got poached by Crowder, but he's like, I didn't get a pay raise. He's like, I went to go, you're moving from New York to Dallas. He's like, I didn't get a pay raise. I went to go do it. And so part of the deal is you get to promote your road like shows, and yeah. you'll make a lot of money doing those shows. And then they're like, you're not allowed you to- still, You still got to close the door to the bathroom, bathroom. Ryan. Oh, God. Yeah. And if you need to, you push the magnet in. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan hey, you're good, up, you're man. good. Yeah. Anyway, what happened? Uh, anyways, That's fine. It's fine. Well, yeah. I didn't even wipe because I had to get... <laughs> yeah. Smart move. Um, but anyways, he was like, wasn't allowed to promote his dates. Like, you know, just if I'm right here and I'm saying like, hey, catch me this this Saturday in Morris Plains, New Jersey, or whatever. But uh, he was like, you're, you're not allowed to do that. And they were going to, if he was five minutes late, not for the start time of the show, but he had like a time to be there to yeah. write. They're like... He had a tardy clause in his contract. Tardy clause. You get sent home. <laughs> He's like, you're going to get <laughs> sent, sent home, home and docked that day's pay, which is like, it just, I don't know. It seems like a horrible work yeah, he, environment. Malice showed the part of the contract that yeah. had all that in it. Yeah. And, and then they like, stuff's the extra crazy. Cause it's like, you and know, then he wanted to own his special. Cause he, cause he, uh, uh, Crowder, I guess they did Crowder's getting back into stand up or whatever. So then they did a show together, but he, Dave headline, cause he's like, you know, very like, uh, well seasoned comedian. And he shot this special and Crowder gave him the door like the money from the door. Right. And then after this whole thing, Crowder was going to like release his special because he's like, I own it because I gave you the door. And he's like, you don't own my special. Like, no, you don't own, just because you we were, we were We were talking with Landau about buying his special. Yeah. We, we talked to a couple of comedians about we like should. buying he's and great. This putting is up so a big great. Times a man. billboard. Yeah, this is nuts because Crowder, I mean, just like two months ago, he's on our show right here, sitting where you're sitting, Ryan. And he was just complaining about the bad, Contract deal. It was still a, a it was just an offer letter yeah. at the time. It wasn't a full contract, but he was pissed. He was pissed that it was just a low ball offer. He was just, he didn't even, there was like, they weren't even negotiating. He was just mad that it, at the crappy offer. And then he turned around and I haven't heard his side of the story, but oh. according to Dave, and you said they showed the contract. Another thing Dave Landau said, which was crazy, is he said that uh, Crowder brought him in his office and told him to his face that he goes, You made more money than I did last year. Landau did? To, there's no way. That that's possible. To, really? Then yeah, Crowder? He, because he's, you're just saying he's salary wise, he didn't take the salary. Maybe. Well, no, 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 no. Uh, the, it, it it is actually decently common that a business owner will make less money than an employee. Yeah, but that's yeah, the actual yeah, salary. Yeah, yeah. Like his net worth grew by higher. Which when you're talking about sure. anyone with yeah, real yeah, money, if, you're talking if he's net trying worth. to like trick him, but it sounded like this was like an earnest being like, you know, you're actually, you know, just as a negotiator. But you're like, nobody thinks that. Like you're you know. saying that he told Lando Lando's salary was higher than his. Yeah, he goes, you made more money than me last year, and Lando's like, there's no way that I made more money than you last year. Yeah, but that's uh, how much. Did, how, how much did he make, and how much did Crowder make? Is a question. I mean, I don't know. Crowder but comes in the I don't meeting think, with I don't, no shoes on. <laughs> no, but I don't. I don't think Crowder makes as much money as people think he makes. Didn't yeah, he? How much did he turn down from Daily Wire? Well, uh, what was Daily Wire? Fifty million, and then he asked. Okay, so he makes more money than twenty. One hundred twenty million. So yeah, 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 yeah no, 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 Hold on, hold on. But that's full production. Like, full production. The yeah. entire company, thirty employees or whatever. Yeah. So it was you, like you don't know what his costs. costs are. But here's the thing: like, even regardless, I don't know the ins and outs of that world really. Like exactly yeah. what's going on there, and but more importantly. The th if he wants to give him less money, it's like the perfect deal because you're like, hey, let's say I'm only giving you like not that high of a salary to come work at his show or whatever, right? But then he goes, yes, but we'll promote all your dates. That takes him three seconds an episode and you basically make all your money on the road. So it's almost like you're getting subsidized. So it's like, I'm paying you less, but it's like I'm paying you in exposure right. in a way that's real because you actually do get to go cash that out by like going on the road and make money. So it's like, it's such like a win-win for people well, that like, I just don't understand why you would have, ever, I don't get that part so, of Well, it. so here's the question for those that watch Crowder. Does Land did, did Lando not ever shout out any of his dates? He did. He said he was doing it, and then eventually they were like, "You're not. You're you're this has got uh, the new. Yeah, like you will shout out your dates. You're allowed to do it behind the paywall. 
shout out your dates on the f- Friday show, I guess. And then, uh, and then they were like, we'll do it one time a week on a medium of our choosing. So that could be like a tweet. We, we had Luke uh, on the show. He has his own membership website, his own t-shirt business, and I literally don't care that he shouts it out. Yeah, it's the same deal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this yeah, is a constant shout out, 24-7. Every time, anytime or your, your the own website or whatever. Yeah. But, but again, but like brand. every podcast you go, for the guests, you go, what are your plugs? Like, you know, it's pretty normal. But, but but I'm I'm saying like, for the guests I get, for, we're talking about someone who's paid to be, for, be at the company, when, and people are like, oh yeah, but you know, uh, Luke doesn't work for you or whatever. And I'm like, he's on the show for like, six months or whatever every single night monday through friday you're right i don't pay him it's like shout out your thing but everybody here shouts out whatever they want and that kind of makes sense yeah you know, yeah like catching in atlanta Ian, this Ian, weekend you said you're going to austin Tuesday or whatever and, yeah i'll be in austin on the august uh, april 29th <laughs> for the take human action tour take human action tour.com See and then there. and then i guess the problem is ian you're going to be tardy that day and so i'm gonna have to send I mean, you probably, i might be in grammar theater right oh, Long definitely, yeah. <laughs> so I'll be that's, that's, the, that's the other thing too because we've got other people who come on the show that like ian was just like oh i'm not going to be here that day i'm like oh whatever yeah you know like it's weird that we a contract being like if you're not here on time you're tardy and you gotta go home yeah that sounds was personal that was another thing too is so sounds i guess not fun, I'll tell they you were like much. you have to be here on fridays they're like you have to be here on fridays which then doesn't really allow him to do weekend dates because usually like you're performing friday night and then he's like crowder was like no showing all the time on fridays anyways so he's just obviously disgruntled and he just felt like he was being treated Poorly. It seemed like they wanted to just get him out of there, which I don't understand why they would go through all of this when they could have just been like, we're not renewing your contract. Yes. They can't. Did they cancel his old contract and then offered them this? They, new... he, said, he said they offered a 1099 him. Oh, yeah. Make him an employee. <laughs> make him, uh, no, that, like a oh, contract. That's like a contract. You don't even work here. You're just a contractor of ours. It's devastating. Yeah. I love both those guys so much. I mean, I don't know them either very well either of them that well, but I've really enjoyed spending time with both of them. Yeah, we know Dave, Dave Landau, yeah. New York comedy. Yeah, scene. Dave's hilarious. What like, an amazing Yeah, so uh, the, the Quarter Black Garrett's got the tweets. Official Landau, Dave, and myself are launching a new sketch talk show on The Blaze called Normal World, released, uh, release date TBD. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. And that was another thing. I think he said that Crowder wanted to like own that or something. Normal World was just like a sketch he made. Like he threatened to, if he released it, like, cause he was going to fire f- three or four people. It's almost like an abuse, a kid that was physically abused now abusing their own children. Like Steven has been through hell such that now he's that's turning around. What, that's what Landau, he goes, it was like a guy who used to be bullied. That's what Landau said. He goes, it was like a guy who used to be bullied and now is the bully. That's like... I'm paraphrasing. But well, let's, I mean, this like changes a lot. Of, some people are asking me, have I changed my view on the whole Daily Wire thing because of this? And my response is, I've not heard what St- Stephen has to say about this. And I, I like Crowder. I, we talked to him to a great deal about business. This sounds abnormal. And so, you know, look, I like Dave too. So I don't know, but yeah. I, I will say I, my first bias is whenever there's like a former employee coming out and saying bad things about the company they worked for, I'm like, I'm kind of not surprised that someone who's no longer with the company is saying bad things for about sure. it. There's two sides to every story. I'll, and the, and I'm sure all the people wor- currently working with Crowder are like, I don't think that's not true. Mm-hmm. But uh, then again, you're not the at, first time that like a on air personality is like a ego guy. I mean, this is like standard in this industry. It's like whatever. And there's a part of that that like comes with the thing or whatever. But but, but also yeah. like it's it's you, you, we, you don't know. I mean, look at Veritas, right? You get all these people, these, this letter comes out claiming that James is a bad person or whatever, but then it turns out some of these employees never witnessed anything, and a bunch of the employees actually quit and go work with James instead, so clearly something was not true about what they were claiming. Yeah. You never know, man. It kind of feels like Landau was, Dave, I know you're listening, going in late a lot, not to the performances like you said. <laughs> well, no, so he said that he was like, tired of his, his, he said, he admitted, he goes, I was coming in late, but not for the show. He was like late for his call, I guess like, you know. Yeah, but- and then we they're canceled shows meetings. for that reason. Like, they were probably having know. business meetings and like, Landau again, man. We're waiting on him again, again. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. if you're doing production for a show and there's like, hey, guys, we got a new notice from, you know, the person who was going to bring in the music. Is Dave here? Dave's. So when's he going to get? And then he shows up five minutes before airtime. And they're like, did you get the briefing on the new thing we're doing in the morning? It's like, no, it's fine. And to me, like, all that stuff's like, yeah, it could be standard. He said, she said. But the, the not mentioning the dates to me is the only part yeah, where you're yeah, just like, yeah. I just don't see any rhyme or reason why that could possibly make sense. Unless unless you just kind of like are so detached from the stand up world now where you're just like, I don't really like. It just get seems heavy handed. It seems like, why is that? The other a, stuff. Yeah, it's all exactly what you're saying could be true. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, or just, the blaze colluded. 
with Landau and Quarter Black Garrett offering them fat cash to besmirch the good name of Crowder. <gasps> Maybe. That's right. <laughs> so, that's what we should do with BuzzFeed to get the price down so then we can swoop in and buy it. <laughs> I think wow. that's a crime, Let's be smirch. BuzzFeed. <laughs> you don't. We, I, I will. I will I think freely like besmirch BuzzFeed any, anytime. <laughs> I think the anyplace. first twenty minutes of the show we did that. But that's why I would never want to buy BuzzFeed. You're right. It's like buying a polished turd. It's just you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited it's for this factory. show. Polished turd factory. <laughs> I'm really excited for uh, for this. Yeah. What, what, turd, is, what is what is it? I don't know. I don't know. But I love these guys. Dave Landau. No, Dave did like a, he did like a sketch show. Yeah, it's like a sketch show. He released okay. it on YouTube. Oh. Hmm. Once a week or something. I think he just did. I like think this is like a pilot. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. How's Steven doing on Rumble? I haven't, I haven't Very well. been watching it. Uh, I think uh, I was yeah. I was actually watching the premiere of Malice, and then people in the comments were like, uh, Rumble was crashing while they're, so they were like, because people are like, I'm Rumble. trying to watch both, and Rumble, they were unable, like, I guess, I don't know. Rumble's growing too quickly. Yeah. Like, it's, Rumble you, you must have you really had a bag come at you from Rumble. <laughs> had a what? Offered a bag. Offered a, of a, money. Uh, we've had offers from a bunch of companies. I've talked, like, and, and they're just all bad. Yeah. Oh, okay. my, my, my view of, uh, let me first say this. Uh, I, I, I like all of these companies for the work they do because it's very important stuff. Um, we use Rumble for the website. We use Rumble for our video player. But every deal that I've received feels like, it feels like, you know, a business guy comes to me and they're thinking to themselves, how stupid is Tim Pool? Let me try and figure it out. And then they're like, oh crap, he's actually good at business and they leave. Yeah. So like the deals that we've been offered have been like, I look at it, I'm like, did you really not think that I knew, like, do you think I don't know how to deal with contracts and business? And they were like, it's just standard stuff. And I'll be like, okay, dude, but here's the they thing. They put the weird stuff Those in Those contracts there. work on people. Yeah. So whenever I see people doing these deals, I'm just like, it's like, could you imagine I, I, like you're a regular person trying to play in the NBA? You're saying there could easily be like in six months, you're like, hey, all those people are getting sued to give that money back. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I think without naming any one of these companies specifically, when Crowder came out and was like, how dare the Daily Wire do this to me? My attitude with that is kind of like every single company, every single one is ripping off the people they've signed. I mean, entertainment no industry, this is a tale as old as time and just the entertainment industry. It's, it's just like to, 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 to varying degrees that someone is being taken advantage of. And, uh, and, and I, it's, or, it's like, yeah, but it, I think that a lot of times it's like, if you think of it like a record label, it's like, you're basically like a venture company where you're like, Hey, we're doing, going to put money into 10 things. We're going to lose money on, you know, most of them and then one will make 10 money and i guess you're ripping that guy off but the other ones you lost money on. let me i'll explain to you guys how it works right let's let's do a hypothetical some dude's got a hundred thousand subscribers on youtube and they're like i i want to make something bigger than this i want to i want to increase my money I, I need i need help i don't know what to do in today's day and age it's very very easy to ramp up your own company when you're at a level like 50 to 100 000 or like more than 50 000 subscribers so what's happening is these companies are looking at people who are hitting that mark and they're thinking before this person figures out how easy it is to make themselves rich, we better lock them into a heavy contract. Yeah. And that's basically what it it's is. It's not easy for everyone to do that, though. You know, there's lots yeah, of people no, that aren't I, that I, type of person. It, yes, but it's like anyone could do it and it's not difficult. Well, it's could, just like could such like a arbitrary word, though. It's like, you know, like. You know, anyone could probably run a marathon, but it's like, you know, it's unlikely that, you know, most people are going to run the Ironman. You know what I mean? So to say that, oh, they would have otherwise, a lot of Dude. people wouldn't do, wouldn't otherwise. So if somebody were to create their, so uh, you want to create your own website, your own subscription service, it'll be done in three days. You retain all of the money. Instead, what they're doing is they're going, well, I don't know how this works, so I'll just sign a contract. That sounds good. And what the contract really does is it gives the person you signed to like 90% of your revenue. Oh, yeah. you're saying more Wasn't for like big established in, people? In Canada, this company in Canada that was, uh, they did something like that and then they stopped paying all their creators nope. recently? Who? What? I don't know what their uh, name is. I, I saw I, Ethan. Uh, Ethan Klein? Klein was tweeting about it. That oh, it was, a, it was like a, a multi-channel like network BB or something? something? Those NCN seem like such a scheme. Here, here, here's yeah. what happens. I'll give you yeah. a hypothetical. I was involved a guy, with the first a, one. A guy, has a, like a, a guy with 100,000 followers has a, has a potential 
monthly income rate of maybe like $100,000 per month. Out of the 100,000 subscribers, he needs to convert 10% into paying monthly users. That's a really high conversion. 10%? I bet you most people's conversion is not ten percent. It was called BBTV, by the BBTV, way. BBTV. That's Let, the one. okay. Sure. Let's say let's say twenty uh, percent. No, no. I think it's low. Like what percentage? Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Two percent. <laughs> not, not more or less. Let, let, let's, we let's, will not allow you to buy BuzzFeed with. <laughs> let's put, let's put it this way. Hundred right, million. How about two hundred million? You like that? Let's say someone's got. Okay, I subscribers probably not the right word to put it. Um, hundred thousand viewers. Yeah. Consistent. Oh, viewers. Okay. Viewers who are like. You could you could have a bunch of subscribers and then who like knows? Like your core audience. Yeah. yeah. So if you can convert ten thousand people, let's just put it this way: five thousand people of your following of a hundred thousand at ten bucks a month, and you're making half a million dollars a year. What's happening? These companies are coming in and say, "We'll pay you a hundred thousand dollars a year to come and work for us." And these people, not having actually just spent the ten minutes to make a website, are like, "That sounds great." They, lock, they get locked into contracts. I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, okay, but there's let's say you're someone else that you're streaming on YouTube, right? Like a huge portion of your streaming, a huge portion of your YouTube money just from comes from like doing their streams then cutting up all the clips after. So they're like, hey, why don't I take this like guaranteed money to go do the streams? I'm going to put the videos on YouTube after. It's like, I know, it, like to some people, it's like, yeah, sure, that's like a no brainer. It's not really costing me anything. I, th I think it's, I, yeah. I think it's exploitative. And some people are like not on. business people. They're like, I'm just a creator. I'm not. That's what I, it comes down that's to. That's what happens. Is those are the people they prey on. I, I would agree that. with that if it was 20 years ago yeah. when it was difficult to move around in certain industries. But now we're in the era where you can get you, you can literally just Google search WordPress plugin, WordPress API. And if you don't want to do that, you can just like Google search website company and then you, you type in your credit card. And then a week later, like your website's done. Here's how you log in. Mm -hmm. And then it's like you officially just instantly have your own Patreon. You have your own subscription I think you're, there's two things. There's like being an artist, being a creator, and there's being an entrepreneur. And you're sort of like fusing them together. Like it's obvious that one's, and the, they're the two hand in Bro. hand. It would if be nice you, if we if could we're, somehow we're, fuse we're, those. Well, it's we're like talking, you could also go to an entrepreneur right, and be like, you know how to talking, build a company? You just yes. get on the microphone we're and We're talking talk, about and people who've already started their own channels, already built their own following. So they all, already have a bit of an entrepreneur. They've already yeah, done everything they need to do to to monetize their audience. I remember watching a story in BuzzFeed about a woman with 300,000 subscribers who was working as a waitress and a little girl started screaming like, oh my God, you're so-and-so. Why are you working as a waitress? And she said she ran back into the back room and started crying. It's like, I get it. They don't know. The only thing they're missing is one sentence being told to them. That one sentence bridges the gap between how they're not making money and, 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 the, and their audience. And all they need is for someone to be like, oh, uh, download this plugin. Or I'll tell you what, Hire this company, you're done. Show you're done. your boobs. <laughs> but but here's but what, what, what's happening Only is fans. we've I've talked to to various creators about would they want to work with us? Would they want to do a deal with us? Can we sign them? And the answer is always no, because people are like, I've already got my own platform. I don't I don't need to do a deal with anyone. I'm like I totally get it. Yeah. Right on. Have a nice day. And then I've actually when I approach people from an honest point and I say like. Here's what your numbers are. Here's what we can expect. Here's where we want to be. They say, then why would I sign with you? And I'm like, why would you? Why, 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 why would you? Yeah. I, Honestly, I don't know. Promotion. And That's then the promotion. One. Yeah. And, and it's, and, and promotion Head is space for Similar up. to what Dave, why Dave Landau was on. And why Crowder's on Rumble. They're pushing him to on the top every time he goes on. Yeah, it depends on, on yeah, the type sure. of content you're making. Some things require like a lot of, you know, of your head's RAM. I think that, uh, Big time. 20 years ago, you're a musician and you're like, I don't know how to sell albums. Today, you already have Twitter. You already have YouTube. You already have a Facebook. You already have connection to your audience. I'll explain it this way. Every single company that's reached out to us saying, have you considered publishing a book? Have you considered creating this product or this product? It's all a scam. Here's what they do. I, they, 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 they've come to me and said, we want to do a book with you, Tim. And I say, tell me what that means. And like, we're going we're gonna to work with you. You, you write out your ideas for the book. You write out chapter treatments. We then work with you on crafting each of those chapters. Then we're going to get your book. We're going to sell it. It's going to hit number one. And I say, and, and how is that going? How are you going to do that? And they go, it's perfect. All you got to do is go on your show <laughs> yeah, and yeah, tell yeah, people yeah, to buy yeah, your book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, so that's why? the promoter. Like, yeah, can you tweet about this more? But that's what yeah. all of it is. So yeah. these people think. They're like, if I sign with them, I get a look, man. Yeah, but if, as you, the network, you actually do have a mechanism. You do know how to like, you know, build something. So you have that expertise. But is we're worth not something. We're not talking about a person with no followers and no following that we're trying to craft. We're talking about a prominent personality being told, sign with us and give us ninety percent of your existing revenue, and we'll give you back ten percent. Yeah. yeah. Here's the reason it didn't work on me. I run a company. So when all these companies came to me and said, here's how, here's our tip, our standard structure. I said. 
I, I, this is a literal quote. I said, are you asking me for a loan? Yeah. I'm not going to say who I was talking to, but these companies come to me and they're like, we're going to guarantee you this much money. We're going to do this for you and do that for you. It's it, they basically want to give you a job working for yourself. They, 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 they want position. me to give them <laughs> working they, for yourself. They, they want yeah, us to sign over, money, right? sign over all of the of the money we already make and our future prospects, our growth projections and everything in exchange for less money than we make now. Yeah. But if you're somebody who's not bridged that gap by simply setting up your own subscription website like Locals, Patreon or a website, you don't know your own worth. So they're trying to get you to sign before you can realize you're worth 10 times what they're offering you. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.